My name is Winnie Locke, and I'm the producer of Facing Page Productions. Something that we do every year is we do a, an annual back-to-back -back reading of all 37 of Shakespeare's plays. It t takes about 85 hours, and it's open to the general public, so anyone can sign up. My first meaningful experience with Shakespeare, I feel, was just in school. I took drama classes in high school, and um, I think that's that's the first time I really wrapped his words around my mouth. And I loved the beauty of them, and I loved how it felt, and uh, and I just, you know, was hooked. And then also, when I was a senior in high school, we were assigned to direct the freshmen in in a Shakespeare scene, and uh, and I chose Richard the Third. I chose the Richard and Anne scene, you know, from the top of the play, and I also ended up cutting and pasting and making it accessible to us in that way and it was just also fun to learn that you can you can do that working with this material has enhanced my life you know the different ways of using the language and and you know and so many shakespearean words are in our vernacular you know it originated from him and from his plays and a lot of people don't know that but it's it's just fascinating to know that Yes, we're saying these words in our vernacular that, you know, he created. You know, you just start thinking in a more fluid and um, emotional way um, in your everyday life. And everyday life can be, you know, hard and, you know, curt, you know, but you just have that in your brain and in your heart. And it just really enhances your life experience. I think it just takes an openness of mind and heart. Um, because a lot of people, they, they think that the language is like, well, it's a little difficult, it's very different, it's not how I speak or think, and I'm not going to get it. But I think if you just trust yourself and trust the language and just kind of like roll the words around in your mouth until they become familiar, then you'll just start understanding what he meant and what he was talking about and what the people in that age, you know, what they were going through in their lives. Um, and then once you you know, open yourself to that, then, you know, really dive in and see, you know, see the subtleties, read between the lines. I think, you know, just trusting in the language is the first step. I'm going to read sonnet number 16. It's one of my favorites because it's not a necessarily romantic or over, overly lovey-dovey one. Um, not that I have anything against those. Those are very beautiful in their own way. Um, but this one I just feel has its own strength and it's about inner strength and, um, and the time of life and what you're going to do with your life and how to make that work for you and how to be happy. But wherefore do not you, a mightier way, make war upon this bloody tyrant time and fortify yourself in your decay with means more blessed than my barren rhyme now stand you on the top of happy hours and many maiden gardens yet unset with virtuous wish would bear your living flowers much liker than your painted counterfeit. So should the lines of life that life repair, which this time's pencil or my pupil pen, neither in inward worth nor outward fair, can make you live yourself in eyes of men. To give away yourself keeps yourself still and you must live drawn by your own sweet skill. That's on at 16.